Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example, by calculating the chi-squared test of goodness of fit, in other words, to find the level of confidence that the data we have is good, is doing or is tossing two dice 36 times. 36 times makes sense because there are essentially 36 different combinations in which the dice can land, and so therefore 36 was a good number. So here are the, all the possible outcomes, anywhere from 2 to 12, and by tossing two dice 36 times, these are the number of times we got two, the number of times we got three, the number of times we got four, and so forth. And now what we're going to do is see if that is a reasonable result, or is there something wrong with the dice that makes us get a result that is questionable. Maybe one of the dice was loaded or so. So here's the equation in which we calculate chi squared, and this is how we do that. Remember, we take the difference between the experimental result and the theoretical result. We should only have one occurrence of getting a two instead. We got two. We should theoretically, this is by probability, two occurrences of getting a three, we only got one, and so forth. So then we take the difference between those numbers, we square them, and we divide them by the probability of getting that particular outcome. So here you can see these are the numbers that will then go into the denominator for each delta, and then when we square the numerator, we divide by the probability of getting that particular outcome, we add them all up, and we end up with, after a bunch of arithmetic, we end up with 4.15. So we take that number, chi squared 4.15, and go for the case where we have 11 possible outcomes, and these are the numbers associated with chi-squared that are appropriate or according to certain levels of confidence. So we looked up 4.15, which is between here and here, so you can see that it's a little bit closer, let's see, 4.15, yes, okay. There we go, 4.15, so it's a little bit closer to 4.58 compared to 3.61, so we assume that it's about a 96% confidence level, which is a very high level, so we can assume that the two dies that we use to come up with those numbers are probably good dies, and we have a very high confidence level that the dies are good, and that the outcome is according to what we would expect for using two normal dies, and this is how it's done. Now notice, it is a good example because you can see how the denominator is associated with the probability of getting that particular outcome, which is all different for every particular fraction, which was not the case when we were using a single die because every denominator had the same number of possible outcomes. And that is how it's done. Tappy, you're making a lot of noise down there. Tappy is our new doggy. It's not that new. <laughs>